It's a calculator attack! Yes, indeed, it is time for the most dreaded topic in chemistry significant figures. If you don't have your calculators on standby, uh, you, uh, you shouldn't be um, confused by that intro because the calculator is actually your friend in this case and not the enemy, although it can be the enemy. It's a very confusing time. These are confusing times. What the heck is a significant figure? What does figures have to do with anything? What does it mean to be significant? What is significant? All of these questions are reeling through your mind and I'm here to tell you that this is actually not a very hard concept. What? How can that be? This seems impossible. Significant figures are always talked about as the hardest thing in chemistry or any science or math class for that matter. But I'm here to tell you that it's really not. There are just a few simple rules to keep in mind when talking about significant figures. First, let me talk about what a significant figure means. So significant figures, also known as significant digits, which is, I will use those interchangeably. I will also use the term sig fig or sig dig, although no one says sig dig. I'll just say sig figs. I often say significant digits. Anyway, what are they? What they are are numbers that mean something, as opposed to numbers that don't mean anything. What do I mean by that? Let me tell you how old I am. I am 27. I can't believe that. I am ancient. I am dying. Anyway, I am 27 years old. Um, but I know that more accurately. I am technically 27 and a few days. Um, let's just say I'm 27 years and 50 days old. 50 divided by 365 is 0.13698630014. So I am 27.13698630 years old. That's not really meaningful though. Really? If I, I can, in fact, these numbers could go on forever and ever. And it's really going to keep on going until, like, because I could add fractions of a, year, of a day, fractions of an hour, and all of these numbers just cloud what we mean. And so when I tell you that I'm 27 years old, that's really all that matters. And what I'm telling you is that I'm 27 years and some amount of not a year, like a month. I'm some months old. That's what it means when I say 27 years old. I don't mean I turned 27 this second or microsecond. It means I've been 27, I will be 28 in the future. So 27 has some significant digits here. 27, both of those are significant. I know for a fact that I am 27 years old. The correct way to write this in science is to talk about everything we know and one kind of like variable digit when we're talking about measuring. So really it'd be more accurate to say, I'm 27.2 years old. That was an estimate. I estimated that last digit because as a scientist, to be most accurate, I'm close to 27.2 years old. It's been about two months since my birthday. So it's, I'm like a little more than 27 years old, but not quite 28 years old. That was a kind of weird, bad analogy to talk about what we're talking about when we talk about significant digits. It's talking about the measurement and it's talking about which numbers matter. If I told you that really long string of digits, while that might be more accurate, it really doesn't tell me anything that's worth meaning anything. Um, and so the most common place you'll see these numbers come up is when we're talking about uh, measuring mass. So think about the last video. Uh, we talked about water, and we said that water had a mass of 18.02 atomic mass units. All four of these digits are significant because if you look at the periodic table, uh, you might see that hydrogen has a mass of 1.01, but if you looked at a different periodic table, you might see it has a mass of 1.008. And if you looked at a different periodic table, you might see it has a mass of 1.00794 dot 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 dot. And like those digits go on for a pretty long time. We know the mass of hydrogen to a very uh, accurate degree of uh, measurement. We know a lot of those digits very well, but those aren't always useful for us. So when we round and we say that the mass of hydrogen is 1.01, .01, we're making a statement about the significance of my measurement. We're saying that when I'm doing these measurements, I don't know the masses 
all to that exact accuracy, but really all I know are these digits here. Um, and that's kind of just talking about numbers that have a meaning. And it's not as important to know what they mean, but it is important to know what you can do with them. So when I wrote the number of the mass of water as 18.02, that's because each of these numbers, 1.01 and 16.00, for the mass of oxygen and hydrogen, respectively, both had two decimal places. And that's why I wrote it as 18.02. So you'll see this come up quite a bit. And so we're gonna talk about what significant digits are, how to count them, and how to do calculations with them. So let me erase all this and start from scratch. And I'll write the rules for counting significant digits. And I'll just say for counting sig figs. So it's weird, right? Because I say significant digits, but I write Abbreviate sig figs? I don't know. It's just something I do. Uh, I say sig figs most often. Uh, rule number one. Uh, any digit that you report that is not zero is significant. So all non-zero, basically. Non-zero digits are significant. And so the reason I use digits is because figures is kind of a weird, archaic word. Are significant. Now, here's an example of what I mean by that. 27, that's how old I am, 27 years old. When I say I'm 27, uh, that number has two significant digits, that one and that one, because they're both not zero. And the, the reason for these rules is just because zero is like weird. So the obvious rule is that any number that's not zero is going to be a significant digit. Now, it seems a little abstract to be counting these significant digits before we do anything with them, but just hang with me. This number has two significant digits. Rule number two is any zero between non-zero digits those zeros, any zero is significant. And I like to call these zeros the sandwich zeros. How do you spell sandwich? Without an H? Sure, the sandwich zeros. So let me give you an example of that. Um, I'm just going to change this number to be 207. Now I'm not 207 years old, but for example, this number has three significant digits. All of the numbers that aren't zero are significant, so that one and that one are both a significant digit. And then any zero that's sandwiched between them, so he kind of like comes along, so he's also significant. So this number has three significant digits, or sig figs. Sorry for using those two interchangeably. They're just both in my brain, I don't know why. So that's another rule. So that, those are always significant. Now come the weird zero rules. So there's a few of them. Here's Rule number three, this is any zero before a non-zero, non-zero digit is, better use red for this, not significant. And you might be thinking, why the heck would I write a zero in front of a number? And that's exactly right. Any zero that's before a number is not significant. Imagine if I threw a zero here. That doesn't really make sense to do, but it's the same idea. That zero doesn't add any meaning to the number. It's just saying that, hey, I don't have a measurement here. That's what it means to be non-significant. It means there's no measurement there. A more accurate time you would see a zero before is if we have some kind of decimal number. So imagine 0 0.27. This zero in front is not significant because it does not have any measurement value there. Really what it is is just kind of a placeholder. It shifts the numbers to where they belong. Because if I didn't have that zero there, well sure, you could write it like this, but only animals put decimals without the zero in front. Um, but maybe if you hate that, that's another way to show it. I'm shifting those, the 2 and the 7 to where they belong, because without those zeros, it's 27, or 0 
But with the zeros there, you can see that it's 0 0.027. This is 27 ten thousandths, 27 ten hundred thousand, 27 thousandths. Um, it changes the meaning of that number to not have them there. So while they are important and you have to write them, they aren't significant by formal definition of the word significant because they don't have a meaning in respect to the value. They are there to push the number where they belong. So any number with zeros before these non-zero digits are not significant. So that means this number still has two significant digits because these zeros are before. Now, the next common like mental step is to talk about zeros that are after. So any zero after a non-zero digit And this is a sometimes rule. This, these zeros after non-zero digits is significant when the decimal place, specifically when a decimal point. And I'll show you a few examples of what I mean by that. Is significant, but with a decimal point. So, let me show you an example of one that does not meet that criteria. 270. So, this number, once again, this zero is only there to push the 7 and the 2 to where they belong. Without the zero, this number is 27, which is this one. With that zero, the number is 270. And here's what this number means. I have a measurement of at least 200 something. And I have a measurement of at least 70 something, so 270. But this zero does not mean anything when I have written it like this. It's just saying that it's 270. Let me use a more, uh, a bigger example. Uh, the speed of light is, uh, yikes, 300,000, 300, 3 times 10 to the 8, 300 million. Uh, meter per second. That's the speed of light. We don't know the speed of light is three zero 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 exactly meters per second. In fact, it's not that. It's a little less than that. It's about 299 million meters per second. So when I write this number as 300, 300 million meters per second, that's an estimate. It's a rounding. This is the only number that has significance in this measurement um, because all of these numbers are only there to put the three where it belongs. Without those zeros there, it would just be three, which isn't the speed of light. It's not three meters per second. I can walk three meters. I can run three meters per second. I could run three meters. Yeah, three meters per second. It is a meter. You can walk three meters per second very quickly. Brisk walk, that would be. Um, so the reason those zeros are there are to make the number mean what it's supposed to mean. They're important, you need to write them, but they're not significant, so we don't write them. Or we don't, we don't count them as significant. Um, so, sorry, lost my train of thought. I was thinking about walking three meters per second. Yeah, you can walk three meters per second. Okay, sorry, I had to think about that. Goodbye. Um, okay, so that's what it means to have zeros after where they don't matter. Let me go back to 270. This number totally changes if I write it like this. Now that decimal point is telling me something. It's saying I measured something and it was exactly 270. It wasn't 271 and it wasn't 269. It was 270. That zero is now known. And in fact, that changes when I do that too. It means that this zero is now significant. It's saying that I know that's 270.0 and not 270.1 or 269.9. So when I have a decimal point, now the number becomes significant. So let me show those two examples side by side. 270, this only has two significant digits, two significant. But 270 with a decimal point, now that zero is significant. 
So when you're looking at zeros after, you should be looking for uh, the decimal point. Any number before, any zero before the numbers is not significant, so these don't count. But any number after the zeros, they do count if there is a decimal point. Now let me show you a few harder examples. So I'm gonna keep those rules up, and I'm gonna write some numbers. And yes, all of these numbers are gonna have some zeros in them, because obviously almost all these rules are about the zeros. Um, I'll try to get away from the number 27, because it's a bad reminder of how old I am. 46.00. Now let's look at our rules. All non-zero digits are significant. Well, that means those two numbers are significant. Now, I've got these zeros at the end, so we're looking at this rule for zeros after a non-zero digit. They are significant if there's a decimal point. Well, there's my decimal point. That means these two numbers are also significant as well. So this number, 46.00, has four significant digits, four significant figures, whichever one you want to use. 46.00 has four significant digits. A different number, 4,600. Looks very similar, but is um, importantly different. This number still has the two non-zero digits, so those are always significant. But these two zeros here, well, there's no decimal point, and they're after these non-zero digits. That means they are not significant. So this number only has two significant digits. So the decimal point changes the meaning of those numbers. Here, they're part of the measurement. Here they're just there to make these numbers mean what they're supposed to mean, but they don't have any meaning in and of themselves. That's the difference there. Um, let me just make up a weird number. Uh, 0 0.0230890. Okay, so lots of numbers here. Let's break it down. Any non-zero digit is significant. So 2 is not 0, 3 is not 0, 8 is not 0, and 9 is not 0. So those numbers are all significant. So we're up to 4 sig figs. Um, here I can see a zero kind of sandwiched between, and this is one of my sandwich zeros, a zero between a non-zero digit. So this zero is also significant. Now rule number three says any zero before the non-zero digits are not significant. Note that this doesn't apply to this one because it's a sandwich. It's talking about zeros that are before all of the non-zero digits, like these. So these guys are not significant. They do not uh, add any meaning to this value, they only put these numbers where they belong. It does not change the value that they're there. And the last, any zero after is significant with a decimal point. So we're looking at this guy. Here's my decimal point. That means it is significant. So we'll put a little underline there. And so my total number of sig figs is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this number had six significant digits. Um, now, let's look at something that's a little bit different. And that thing is scientific notation. So scientific notation, um, I'm pretty sure I had to do a worksheet on it, or if not, it's something that you've probably seen in other classes before. Um, it's just a way to write really big or really small numbers in a manageable kind of way. And we're going to be using scientific notation when we talk about the mass of molecules and stuff. So you need to be familiar with it. Scientific notation works with starting with um, the significant digits and writing it in a way that kind of shortens it. So let's go back to the speed of light. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. Now, this is a really big number with no decimal point. So that means the only significant digit here is that three. All these zeros after are not significant because there's no decimal point. So this number has one significant digit. So that's good, but now I've got all these zeros here that are kind of making this number really clunky. They're important because it changes the value of that three. So what I can do is write this in scientific notation. What that looks like is I'll take my significant digit, which is just three, and then I'm going to multiply by a power of 10 that gets me to here because all these zeros are just like a big old number. So Hopefully you can kind of see that three times, in fact, I'll write it like this, three times 100 million is the same thing as 300 million. Um, and here's my significant digit, and that's what I want to keep. 
This is the part that I don't want making this really clunky. So I want to shorten that. So the way we do this is 100 million. Well, let's just count how many zeros there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight zeros after this 100 million. So this is 100 million. That's actually 10 to the power of eight. And you can prove that to yourself by plugging it into your calculator. Notice we haven't been using our calculator yet, by the way. Hello, calculator. Syntax error, 10 to the power of eight is 100 million. So three times 10 to the eight is a much nicer way, and you might not think so if you're not used to this, but it really is much nicer than writing 300 million. Let me show you a different example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This is a number that we'll be using later in the course. This is Avogadro's number. It's how many molecules are in a mole. That will make sense later. For now, just look at how huge this number is. This is an enormous number, and we will be doing calculations with this number. You don't want to sit there and go 6022000000000000 every time you want to use this number. That would be ridiculous. So let's see what's significant about this number, and then shorten it to scientific notation. So let's look for our significant digits. First thing is any non-zero digit. So six and two and two, those are both, or all three, I guess, significant digits. Sandwich zeros are significant, so boom, that guy's significant. Then all these other zeros are after my last non-zero digit. In fact, that's any zero uh, after the last, I guess I should say, because it's little, the last, and it is before the first. Just to be more specific there. Um, so these are all after the last non-zero digit, and that means since there's no decimal point, that means this is not significant. All of these zeros are not. So all of these are not significant. Now the way we write this in scientific notation is we go all the way to here. So just like we went to the three, we're going to go to this number here. And we're going to want to shorten this to be a decimal that just has the significant digits, like this. So 6.022. Great. Now, the question becomes, to get this 10 to the 8 part, we want to see how much we shifted that decimal point from over here. Now, if you know Avogadro's number already, uh, then you'll know how many it is. But let's go ahead and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we moved our decimal plate 23 times. Or another way to say that is we took this smaller number, 6.022, and we multiplied it by 10 to the power of 23. That would just be, it would look something like this. 6.022 times... So it's 6.022 times this huge power of 10. But when we shorten it to this, times 10 to the 23, that's a much nicer way to show this enormous number that we will need to use. So instead of putting 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 into your calculator every time, you can just do 6.022. There's a button that says times 10 to the, uh, it depends on what your calculator looks like. I can help you find it if you need help with that. And then you do 23. And it gives you that number in scientific notation. On your calculator, it might look like this. 6.022E23. And that's fine. That E just means times 10 to the 23. Um, and so that's the same thing. So that's how we use scientific notation to show the significant digits. It's important to remember that your number that you multiply by some power of 10 needs to be a digit and then anything else is like a decimal. So this number that we had, we put the six in the first slot, the ones slot, and everything else was a decimal point after that. Let me show you two more examples of scientific notation and how they relate to significant digits. Um, I'll use another big number. I'm just gonna make one up. Two, eight, zero, 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 zero. Okay, cool, I just made up that number. So we wanna write this number in scientific notation. 
The important part, the first part, is to find how many significant digits there are. Well, tip, because all these zeros are after my last non-zero digit, so this number only has two significant digits. So we will write this as a decimal number, 2.8, to show that those are the significant digits. Then I've got these zeros afterwards, so I want to multiply some by some big power of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's how big my power of 10 needs to be. I literally do that every time I'm doing this. I just count how many decimal points I need to move from the end of the number, I guess, to where the 2 is. So this is 2.8, and we counted 7 there. So this is going to be 2.8 times 10 to the 7. That's how we write that number in scientific notation. Now, if this has all been for really big numbers. What about a small number? So let me write a small number for you. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, uh, 3, oh, 9, 9. I don't know, just made up a number. So here's a very small number. Um, and you can see that because there's a decimal point here. Let's write this in scientific notation. So since this is a small number, we're going to multiply by some fraction of 10. Now to prove this to yourself, go ahead and do 1 divided by 1,000 in your, sorry, 1 divided by like some really big number. Uh, 1 divided by 1 billion, or 1 trillion. I did 1 divided by a trillion. And I got 1 times 10 to the negative 9. Um, and so that when you see 10 to the negative something, like 10 to the negative 9, uh, what that really is saying is some very small fraction of 10. And that's how we're going to write this in scientific notation, is we're going to multiply by 10 to the negative something. So this is some really small number. Let's find the significant digits. Those are my significant digits, because the non-zero digits are significant, the sandwiched zero is significant by rule two, and all of these zeros before the first non-zero digit is not significant. So these are only there to push the number over this way. So let's write this as a decimal number, 3.099, with the one digit there. One digit in the ones place, and then the rest as a decimal. And now, let's move the decimal point to see how many times we uh, should multiply by a fraction of 10. So we moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. To get right there between the 3 and that first, uh, that significant 0. So I moved it 9 times, but I moved it to make my number small, to show that this is a small number. So we're going to multiply by 10 to the negative 9 because I moved my decimal nine places to the right. So when you move to the right, it's a negative. When you move to the left, it's a positive, just like both of these. And both of those are showing the correct number of significant digits. So anytime you have a really enormous number where those zeros don't really matter, they're just there to push the number out so that it becomes the size it needs to be, 280 or 28 million, I guess is what this is. Um, these zeros aren't part of the measurement. The measurement was 28 million, not 28 million zero, like this number would not, it's not really saying that I know that it's not this. It's saying I know it's something like this. And that's why we use these estimated numbers and that's why we use significant digits. So that's how you can use scientific notation to make those numbers kind of a more manageable size. And so if you see a number written in scientific notation, for example, I'm gonna write one out just like this. Um, 4.01 times 10 to the fifth, so you see that number written in scientific notation, you know that all of these numbers are significant, and you just need to write the zeros that aren't significant. Times 10 to the fifth, well that means I need to move this decimal point five times. So we'll move it one, two, three, four, five. And that means my number is going to end there. So I'll fill in the significant digits, four, zero, one, and then fill in the rest with non-significant zeros. We leave off the decimal point because we know that these zeros are not significant because they weren't in the original number. And that's the number that we were talking about when we wrote 4.01 times 10 to the fifth. Um, so these two numbers are the same number. Uh, let me show a different example with a decimal number. Let's say hmm, uh, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 12. Ooh, that's a really small number. I know that because of how big this exponent is, or rather, I guess, how negative that exponent is. 
So here once again, I can see my significant digits all written right there. This number only has two significant digits. Scientific notation always includes, I should have included that here, always includes only significant digits. SD, by the way, abbreviation for significant digits. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 12. That means I moved my decimal point 12 times. So let me write these, and the negative means I moved it to the right. So let's start way over here, and let's make sure I can move this decimal point 12 times back to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I literally do that every single time. So now, right here, that's where the real decimal point is, and I need to fill in this gap with zeros. So all of these zeros are not significant because they come before the first non-zero digit. And because we're not animals, we put a zero in front of the decimal point like that. But it doesn't matter because all of them are not significant. They're all before the first non-zero digit. So none of these change the value. It just showed what the expanded version of this Kind of nicely written number is, and I'll write it a little bit neater for you. I'm sent to the negative 12. I don't know if that was neater, but it looks nicer to me. So this number and this small number are the same number. It's just this one is a little bit easier to contain. This one has all of these not significant zeros in there. So that's why we use scientific notation, is to write significant digits in a simpler way, in a more compact way, as opposed to writing it out all expanded like that. Um, so those are all the rules for counting significant digits, and I understand this is probably a long video, and it will take some practice, but go through the worksheet I sent out, because I'm sure I sent out a worksheet. This is talking about future Mr. Yeoman, so hopefully you did that. Um, and go through that worksheet. Um, I would go through a few at a time and check how you're doing. So yeah, that's how to count significant digits. The next video is on doing math with significant, digit, significant figures or significant digits. I should pick one.